Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Great to be together on Christmas Eve. Welcome to Chichester Baptist Church. If I haven't met you before, my name's Andy, and I'm one of the ministers here. It's great to come together and worship Jesus on Christmas Eve. A really warm welcome to those that are joining us on the live stream as well. We're looking forward to worshipping together, to praying together. Ellen's going to lead us in a reflection as well. And today we remember that Jesus, the light of the world, that he's going to come, that he has come, that he's going to come. And we remember he, the light of the world, stepped in to a dark world. And it is good and helpful to remember at this time, in amongst the joy and the celebration, that this dark world needs light, doesn't it? It needs the light of Jesus. And so as part of this service, we'll be remembering that, we'll be thinking about that, and we'll be praying that Jesus' light will be known in our world. I'm going to hand over to Kelvin and Tabitha, who are going to lead us in a song. Just to say, if there's children here, it's great to see you. There aren't any separate children groups today. Uh, we have got some colouring. I know some of you have already got your hands on. Adults, there are some spare colouring as well at the back, if you feel you need some colouring to join in with as well. Good morning, Kelvin. Good morning, Andy. Lovely to see you and lovely to see everybody here this morning. Trust you're in good voice and ready to worship uh, this Christmas season. Should we get on our feet? Uh, we're going to sing out this great carol, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Here, um, 
Lord, may we be able to clear out perhaps all the things that are uh, just flooding our minds and uh, are in our heads, the things to remember, the things to do, uh, and take this time uh, to come, each one of us, to you and to come together as your family to you. At this time uh, when it can seem like it's all about taking and receiving uh, and getting, Lord, this morning we come to give. We come to give. What have I to offer to heaven's king? I will bring my life, my love, my all.
just want to add my welcome along with Andy. He and I are the two ministers here. My name is Ellen, if I haven't met you before. And uh, it's really wonderful to be able to celebrate Christmas with you in this way. And welcome to you too, as Andy said, if you're joining with us from home. Our theme for the whole of the Advent season here at CBC has been this, Unbelievable Christmas. And uh, on each Sunday in Advent, we've been reflecting on uh, different ways, the unbelievable nature of the Christmas story that we as Christians believe is true. And, and that, it, that, it is, that it is wow, it is unbelievable, this wonderful story. And today, what I'd like us to do is just to take some time in reflection and space in what is a really busy time for so many of us, just to pause and to think. And we're going to watch a clip now which reminds us that part of this unbelievable story is that this baby, this baby Jesus, was not just a baby. He was not just an ordinary baby. Let's watch this. He's just a baby, ten fingers, ten toes, two eyes, two ears, one mouth and one nose. He's just a baby, cries out for mum's arms as he lies in a manger in the innkeeper's barn. He's just a baby, yet the sky changed its form as a new star appeared when this baby was born. He's just a baby. Yet the hosts of heaven sang hallelujah to this baby, hallelujah, son of man. He's just a baby, yet drove a mad king wild, who stained the streets with innocence, looking for this child. Why? Because he's just a baby, yet will walk on the seas, feed thousands with nothing, and perform miracles with ease. He's just a baby, yet will carry out the law, live a life of perfection so man will fear no more. He's just a baby, yet will speak to every nation, every broken heart and lost soul, he will fight for their salvation. He's just a baby, yet when they call him man, they will shout for crucifixion and drive nails through his hands. He's just a baby, yet at his final breath, all creation will shake, mourning his death. He's just a baby, yet when he's laid in his grave, he will rise three days later, victorious to save. He is just a baby, when we look in his festive cot. But the truth is, he's not just a baby. He is the Almighty Son of God. Jesus, the baby who was born but born to live, grow up, die, and then rise again for each and every one of us. We're going to hear our Bible reading this morning, which is from John chapter 1, and we're going to hear it read three times, and then think together about the unbelievable significance of light shining in the darkness and the true light that was coming into the world in Jesus. So we're going to read John 1, verses 1 to 9. I'm going to read it in English. something quite powerful about hearing that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it when it's been read from two sisters from Ukraine and Iran who have fled their own countries which through war and violence are themselves very dark places and for them to stand here and declare that through their faith in Jesus for them the light shines in the darkness and we believe that the darkness has not overcome it. And we pray for light to come. Why don't you stand with me if you can, and we're going to worship together. Jesus really is the light of the world, and he does indeed shine in the darkest of places. And that's our prayer, but it is also our worship. And as we declare the truth 
something happens, I believe, in the spiritual realm as we sing out and pray out that Jesus, we believe, is the light of the world. Things change in the heavenly realms, both here and in other nations too. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me
rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored and the church of Christ was born and then the Spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not face by His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who is resurrected me. Unbelievable significance. John 1, verse 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And verse 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Here we are on Christmas Eve, the end of Advent, we're on the cusp of welcoming the baby, baby Jesus. King Jesus, Saviour Jesus, who was to come and who has come. Many of us will be up early tomorrow. I'm not over the fact that I have teenagers and they still get up very early. That's not right, is it? Because what the promise is, is that they get up early as little ones and they sleep in as big ones. No, not the case in my household. So some of us will be up very early tomorrow, including me. Uh, Some of you are early risers anyway. And it will probably be dark when lots of us wake up. And the light will gradually peek through. The dawn will come. The opening verses of John's Gospel introduce us to Jesus straight away, first out as the incarnation of God. If you've read anything of John's Gospel before, you'll know it's not really like the other Gospels. Uh, Matthew, Mark and Luke are similar. They're called the Synoptic Gospels, which means seeing together, having the same view, because they include many of the same stories in a similar sequence and with similar meaning. John's Gospel is quite distinct. John's Gospel begins not at Jesus' conception or his birth, but at the conception of the cosmos. No angels, no swaddling clothes, no sheep entering the scene to deflect from John's essential point, which is that God, through whom whom the world was created, the one who gives light to all people, became a human being. God lived among us and died among us. And this one human being, out of all the billions who have lived, God's own glory shone with life-giving light. Jesus came to bring the light of God's life into a spiritually dark and dying world. Now, I'm wearing this jumper today. I don't, can you see it from the back? I'm, I'm wearing it for a reason. Um, it says, Believe. On it. Now, I don't know if you remember anything about this, but this jumper actually became quite famous last Christmas. Um, it's from m and Other clothing retailers are available. And uh, it was part of their normal women's range. But in early December, the Bishop of Horsham tweeted a picture of all the female clergy in, Ch- in the Chichester Diocese um, wearing this jumper. 
And um, it just went viral, and it triggered hundreds of other church leaders to do the same. And it was in the national press. Hundreds and hundreds of women ministers bought this jumper and like, posted on social media under the hashtag Team Believe. Here are the um, Anglican clergy in Chichester wearing the jumper. And here are 400 women ministers all wearing the jumper. The Baptists joined in as well. And I never want to miss out on a bandwagon. I also bought the jumper, but I'd have to tell you, I didn't jump on a bandwagon at the right time. I bought it half price in the sale after Christmas. <laughs> but I'm still on Team Believe. So it's getting another outing this year. Now, of course, M&S weren't didn't they? They didn't, it was just part of their normal clothing range. They didn't have any kind of spiritual overtones in producing this jumper. But it caught on as a group of ministers decided to declare, at this time of year, believing is what we do. I am on team believe. We who are here to worship the baby Jesus, King Jesus, the light of the world, we are on team believe. I believe the Christmas story of the incarnation. I believe, we believe, that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The Christmas story is not glossy Christmas cards, fresh, clean straw in a tidy manger. It's actually about the reality of a dark world that needed and still needs the light to shine. Jesus was born into a real world where there was violence and suffering. And he comes today to dark places too. Jesus, the light of the world, shines in the darkness. In the UK, in Ukraine, in Iran, in our lives, Jesus shines in the darkness. John says at the beginning, it says, in the beginning was the word. And what did the word do? If we read a bit further on in John 1, it says this in verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And I love the message uh, version of this. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory. Flesh and blood moved into town in order to show the glory and the light of God. I don't know how many of you have read the book To Kill a Mockingbird. It's a staple text for GCSE English. And Atticus says to his young daughter, Scout, you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. And this is what God did for us. He walked around in our skin. And he did that to bring the light of God into the darkness. And I guess I just want to say in this more reflective time together that Christmas isn't isn't really just an invitation to kind of pretend for a few days. You know, let's park that all is not right with the world and have fun and celebration. It's the opposite. What an incredible opportunity Christmas is to remember that God is deeply affected by human pain, so much so that he was prepared to take on human form to enter into that pain. And as he did so, God himself brought eternal light. And as we sit today on the cusp of Christmas Day, there's lots of joy and family and food and presents. We don't need to diminish all that. I love all of that. But let's own to the darkness, that the world is dark in many ways. In the wars around the globe, Ukraine, in Israel, Gaza, dozens of other nations, in areas where Christians are persecuted for their faith, like Iran, in the hunger and the famine of places like Yemen, in the turmoil in our own nation and in our politics, in the UK cost of living crisis, pushing many into poverty, and into the trouble and difficulty in our personal lives too. You may be here today, as we sometimes describe it, and are feeling out of sync with the season, maybe through illness, disappointment, loss or struggle. Life can be hard for us and for those that we love. Today, I want to remind you that we are on Team Believe. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus came. He will come again. And in between, we pray that his light will come and keep on coming. 
So as part of our Christmas Eve worship and prayer, I'm going to suggest that we light some candles as a defiant act of hope, pointing to the one who shines in the darkness. It's going to read you this quote from Howard Thurman. I will light candles this Christmas, candles of joy, despite all sadness, candles of hope, where despair keeps watch, candles of courage, for fears ever present, candles of peace, for tempest-tossed days, candles of grace, to ease heavy burdens, candles of love, to inspire all my living, candles that will burn all the year long. And I want to invite anyone who'd like to, to come and light a candle. Candles declaring light into the darkness. You might want to light a candle for a person or a place. It might be that you have a particular place of darkness on your heart, somewhere in the world, a country, a region, an area, a home. Or you might like to light a candle for a person, someone that you know who needs the light of Jesus to break in to some personal darkness, maybe. Someone who needs healing, perhaps to remember someone that you've lost. Someone who is in their own dark place and needs peace. Or come and light a candle for yourself, inviting the light of Jesus to break in and bring you peace and help. So we're just going to do that now, and we're not going to hurry. Calvin and Tabitha are going to sing for us at some point, beautiful Christmas song. And what I suggest is that we just take the next bit of time for this. There's no hurry. You can sit and enjoy the space before, during your candle lighting and after. And we'll give a little bit of time. But whenever you want to, why don't you just come forward and light a candle? So let me pray. And then we'll do that. And our prayer is... Help us believe. Help us know, Jesus, that we are on team believe. Help us to trust that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And we come in faith and trust as we light candles today. Stepped into creation 
creation we fight for all to see brought every tribe and nation to their knees arriving with the host of heaven in royal robe and crown the rulers of the earth all bowing down Shows meekness over majesty, wrapped your power in humanity. King on a major throne You could have marched in all your glory Into the heart of Rome Showed them splendor like they'd never known But you wrote a better story in humble Bethlehem, creator in the arms of common men, you will die for our redemption. And your right so we can live. My praise every 
lights on, but I wonder if we could just switch off all the other lights in the foyer, in the welcome area. So we switch them off. And why don't we just have a little bit of time with Calvin playing this beautiful song it's called Manger Throne. He'll just play and we can just pause and pray in the quiet. is represented here in lit candles and in the prayers of our hearts. Jesus, we pray that your light would shine. And for every person represented here, Jesus, we pray that your light would shine. And we remind ourselves that because of you, we can be on Team Believe. And we trust that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. We've got a final carol to sing. Can you see to sing it in the dark? Why not? We'll switch the lights back on afterwards. If you're suddenly thinking, I wish I lit a candle, come on down and light one. We, we lend each other faith, don't we? I think that's one of the things that church does, that church family does. I look at this and I think, I want to lean on your faith for my candle and I will do the same for you. And we gather up these prayers and trust this Christmas time for all these places of darkness. Let's stand, shall we? It's a little town of Bethlehem. So sing out and we'll sing this together as we come to a close.
Men, let's join together. Let's sing this verse out. Oh, morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace to men on earth for Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above while mortals sleep the angels keep their watch of Sing it out, how silent. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of His hand. No we thank you that you are the light who has come to us and we thank you that your light continues to shine together we say that we loved you and we trust you and we worship you amen amen do have a seat everyone our service has come to an end um, great to see lots of us moved really as we came to pray and lighting candles it might be that you would really value someone praying with you before you go some of us will be around at the front we'd love to pray with you with whatever situation you were thinking about um, during our christmas services we've also been mentioning this book is christmas unbelievable it might be that you've come along with a friend or a family member today and you're not sure about what you make of the Christmas story and the Christian faith. This is a great book to take for yourself. Please do take one, there's a few left on the welcome desk. Or it might be you want to take one to pass on to someone else. It's a really helpful book to help others think a bit more about the Christmas story and the Christmas faith. As a church here, we have a Christmas appeal, uh, inviting people to consider if they'd like to make a gift to helping others. Our Christmas appeal this year is going uh, two-thirds toward Tear Fund's Middle East emergency appeal and one-third towards our local food bank. So if you'd like to give, you can do that via this QR code, uh, our digital giving uh, plate as well. 
Uh, finally, to mention other services happening in the next little bit. Uh, this afternoon, uh, we'll have some animals with us. Uh, we're pleased to be putting on our crib service. There's one at 3 o'clock, one at 4.30. So you're welcome to come back uh, to either of them. It's the same service, so just choose which one suits you if you'd like to join us. Uh, tomorrow morning, we're gathering here and on live stream as well at 10 a.m. to celebrate Christmas together. And a reminder, we don't have any services here next Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us. Do stay for refreshments and enjoy time together. Thank you, everyone.